Sveiki, es esmu Baiba Freidenfelde, Latviešu valodas pasniedzēja citautiešiem. Hi, my name is Baiba Freidenfelde and I teach Latvian language to foreigners. And today let's talk about the verbs. And not the verb conjugations, um, but about the verbs in the sentence and what um, can the verb tell you about the structure of the sentence. So I hope this will be useful for those who already have some knowledge of Latvian. For those who just started, it's simply informative. Maybe you will remember something. Maybe you will come back to this video later and will realize the things I'm telling you now is maybe uh, useful. So let's start and I'm sure show you my presentation. So why verb is the most important word in a sentence? Especially if you are writing a text in Latvian language, always pay attention to the verb. No, I think the verb tells us a lot. Kāpēc darbības vārds ir svarīgākais vārds teikumā? Now, first of all, let's look at the most common verb to be, būt. So, if we are using uh, the verb to be in the sentence, it doesn't matter in which form, present, past, future, first, second or third person, singular or plural form, doesn't matter. Uh, it always will be followed by either nominative, so the noun in a dictionary form, or if the information is where, kur, then the noun will be in a locative case and no other cases. It's never accusative after to be verb. So the same about the verb nuatikt to happen. So also, um, because a verb in Latvian can, the ending can mean only the one thing. For example, asmu. It can be mean only es asmu. It cannot be anything else like tu asmu or vinch asmu. It never works like that. So that's why we can sometimes skip that subject. We can skip the personal pronoun S at all because asmu tells us already who is the subject. Okay, so in the sentences where the subject is skipped, pay attention to the verb. The verb will tell you is it S or vinš or viņa or mēs or jūs and so on. Biroja. So in this time after uh, the to be verb, yeah, it's a present a form of to be verb. Biroja in the office is in locative. The long vowel tells us it's a locative form, so it's in the office. Second sentence: Mēs būsim mājās drīz. So we will be home soon. Again, we could skip mēs and say būsim. Būsim is a future form of to be verb. We will be. And again, we cannot, can be skipped completely. Um, un mājās, in this case again, it's a locative form, at home and soon. Viņš nav skolotājs. He is not a teacher. So now, don't forget, nav also is to be verb. It's just a negative form of ir or not. Viņš he is not a teacher. So, Vinš, a third person, and followed by the nominative, skolotais. Latvieši ir jauki cilvēki. So, Latvians are nice people, right? <laughs> so, Latvieši ir is to be verb, and followed by nominative, cilvēki. Mēs bijām iepirkties spicē. So we were shopping in spice. That's the name of the shopping mall. Bijām, again, is a past tense this time. But for mēs, we. Bijām, again, we could skip mēs and say just bijām. It cannot mean anything else except bijām. Jūs būsiet pirmie apmeklētāji. So you will be the first visitors. Būsiet, future form of use. So again, any 
form of to be verb and this came mm, at this time again is followed by the noun in the dictionary form or nominative kur notiek seminars kur notiek seminars where the seminar take place or where it's happening yeah seminars in a nominative The verbs like dzīvo un atrasties always will be followed by the noun in a locative. Because if we think about it, to live what would be probably just one sentence. Dzīvo dzīvi, to live a life. But uh, in all the other occasions, I think after the verb dzīvo and atrasties, the information what follows will be in, uh, so telling us where. And to express the information where the noun in Latvian language changes to the locative ending. Mēs dzīvojam Rīgā. Yeah, the long vowel Rīgā. If we say just Rīga, it means Rīga, name of the city. Rīgā, the long vowel at the end, in Rīga. Mēs atrodamies seminārā. So we are, well, we are located in the seminar. Seminars, so the masculine noun also changes to long A. Ērģeles ir katedrāle, the organ is in cathedral. Katedrāle also changes in locative in cathedral with a long vowel at the end. Krīze ir valstī, the crisis is in the country. Valst is one of those uh, nouns with ending S, but are the feminine nouns. So in locative it changes to long e. Viņi agrāk dzīvoja piņķos. So earlier they lived in piņķi. So all the places what ends with the i are treated as plural nouns. And then the locative ending is os. Piņķos, balvos, talsos, helsinkos, laukos, meaning in the countryside and so on. Ir labi atrasties mājās. It's good to be at home or it's good to be located at home. So, plural feminine form, again, long vowel and S. So, I would usually to say to my students, the locative case you can recognize by the long vowel at the end of the noun. And for the masculine plural forms, it's also going to be us. And feminine plural forms will be a long vowel plus S. So another group of verbs, that's a huge one, because in this group there is the majority of the verbs. So basically most, yeah, almost all the verbs that belong to this group. And it means that um, not j there is just a few, for example, but uh, the verbs could be many, many, many. And most of them uh, will be followed by the information what. Uh, est, to eat, so what? To eat soup, est zupu, dzert, to drink, to drink what? To drink juice, to dzert sulu, and so on and so on. And all this group of verbs asking the noun to be in accusative. So after majority of the verbs, you will use your noun in accusative form. So mix, um, it means that accusative you, <laughs> accusative endings of the nouns are using it are used a lot so very very common very often it's nothing um something you really need to um, learn and remember when to use it so basically use it all the time after most of the verbs except to be verb except the verb um not ticked yeah because mm, yeah and few more that the, another group which is quite small uh, in the next slide. So accusative nouns is add zupu. I eat soup. Accusative ending from zupa, zupu. Vinš zarteju. He drinks tea. Teja become teju. Mēs dziedam dziesmu. We sing a song. Jūs, vai jūs pārdodat māju? Do you sell a house? Māju after the verb pārdod in accusative and then extra information where liepājā and that's in locative. Es rakstu ēpastu so I write an email oh. 
then you can try to look at uh, and build other sentences and look at for the verbs yeah there is um, verbs like leotot to use build it to fill rakstīt to write lasīt to read gribēt to want tulko to translate pirkt to buy pardo to sell mazgāt to wash also please remember it's not only what a thing it could be also a person like if you watch the previous video but the word order in the sentence then you would see like a verb after es radzu tevi i see you so you is also used as a noun in accusative in this case pronoun in accusative case es radzu baibu i see baiba so baiba become baibu even a person's name will change to accusative ending the next group of verbs this is quite small group the verbs uh, would need the receiver of the action and this group of verbs are asking for noun to be in dative case for example look at the verb palīdzēt to help can we think of sentence to help what right it doesn't work so so probably we would say to help or to whom or so that's why uh, if it's not what we use a dative if it's a receiver of the action we would use a noun what follows this verb this information will be in dative palīdzēt brālim palīdzēt tev again if it's a personal pronoun it must be in dative palīdzēt man to help me palīdzēt man dot to give it could be followed by accusative as well dot now do to give money but again as you if you think about the sentence it's never complete if you just say it in accusative that is um, do now do i'm giving money dot it's not enough right it's not clear information so we would need to add to whom as well and that information is in dative now the days do do now do varnam to a child for example same about the verb zvanit because we're calling to whom ad build it to answer of course it could be what to answer a question but at the same time uh, we are answering to whom yeah and again that information will be in dative prasi to ask as a synonym to yautat that are used more often in daily life suti to send again we need a receiver davinat to gift and there will be a receiver yeah radit to show velet to wish looked to ask to beg atnemt it means to take away but not to take away food from the restaurant but to take away with the force from someone something he's holding something and you're taking it away that would be atnemt take to say on stastit to tell and remember some of the verbs could be followed by what as well that would be information in accusative but to whom or for whom will be in dative now let's look at the sentences now for example es zvanu mammai i'm calling to my mom so in latin no need for my and no need for two but ending is a dative ending mammai which palīdz kolēģim so he helps uh, his colleague kolēģim again in dative mēs dodam bērniem pusdienas as i mentioned after dodam it could be what so lunch we give lunch and then to whom bar niem so receiver is in dative oh it's also an indirect object yeah why use yauta yat apsargam did you ask as a security guard yeah so apsargam es pratīšu o jautāšu skolotājai i will ask a teacher again in dative come to davinās ziedus so the dative question what is come 
So if we want to find out the information to whom, then we ask with come. And our answer definitely will be in dative. For example, come to Davinas uh, to whom will you give the flowers? So no, the answer could be mammai, kolēģim, bērniem, apsargam, skolotājai, and so on. Any noun in dative, also tev or sev, myself. Yeah. So try to make your sentences as well. If you have any questions anytime, feel free to write in the comments and I will do my best to answer it as clearly as possible. So if this is clear, there is always in Latvian language some exceptions. I already mentioned that to be verb in any occasion will be followed by nominative. The same thing happens to these three verbs, patikt, garšot, sāpēt. These three verbs also always will be followed by the nominative. Why there are exceptions? Because the logical subject of the sentence is not in a nominative, is not in a dictionary form, the subject, it's in dative. So basically remember, these three verbs will be followed by nominative, but the subject will be in dative. Yeah. And the last one, another verb, very similar to this one. The beginning is the same, so this, I will call it the logical subject, is in dative. The verb vajadzēt, verb vajadzēt, need, is followed by the noun in accusative. So very weird sentence, dative, verb, accusative, no nominative at all. And these sentences will be dative, patikt, nominative, dative, garšot, nominative, dative, sāpēt, nominative. If you know that, that's wonderful. If you don't, try to build some sentences. If you have some already skills in Latin language, feel free to create some sentences. So any subject in dative, man patīk, brālim garšo, and something in nominative, yeah? Brālim garšo, saldējums, vīrietim sāp galva, mums vajag, what do we need? Kafiju. Mums vajag kafiju. Yeah, but uh, if you use garšo, mums garšo, kafija, mums vajag kafiju. So if that's clear, let's move to our task. Pabeidz teikumus lieto vārdu lasagne pareizā formā. So finish the sentences and use the word lasagna in correct form. We have 11 sentences here. Now we can stop the video and write down and pay attention to the verb. And try to remember after this verb, what do I need to use? Yeah. When it's done, let's check the answers. Šajā kafēnīcā ir garšīgas lasagnes. So the adjective garšīgas tells us it's a feminine plural noun and ir, so nominative. Leduskapī ir lasagne. To be verb followed by a nominative. Es gribu lasagne. So gribēt, the verb gribēt is followed by the noun in accusative form. Gar fildam arī garšo lasagne. After garšo, that was, was one of those um, exceptions, is followed by the nominative. Man vajag lasagne. I need lasagne. So after vajadzēt, vajag, we need to use accusative form. U. Man vajag tomātus lasagnei. In this sentence, after vajag, we use noun tomatus, tomatoes, in accusative form. And then we add an indirect object. To whom or for what or for whom. So, lasagne in dative. 
fancy lasagna. The mushrooms are inside there, so in lasagna. It's a do lasagna because after the verb est uh, to eat, we would use accusative. It's not to be verb, so it's not one of those exception verbs. So it's accusative. Es gribu est lasagna. And this time est, we have a second verb, I want to eat. And the second verb is the one that affects the noun. So after est, supposed to use accusative, lasagna. Es gribu būt lasagna. I would like to be lasagna. And then second verb is to be verb. And as you know, after to be verb, we supposed to use a nominative or dictionary form, lasagna. Es asmu lasagna. I am lasagna. So, es asmu is followed by the noun in nominative because asmu is to be verb. If that's clear, that's wonderful. And a little bit more, I'd like to pay attention. Verbs of movement. So, at the beginner's level, we also look at the verbs of movement like iet, braukt, ceļot un lidot. These verbs also will be followed by particular order. So in this case, it will be mostly followed by prepositions. And the prepositions are uz, to, ar, with or by, and pia, to a person. Uz is to a place to a person and then we have a preposition rule yeah we use us plus noun in accusative if it's in singular form or as uh, always with the prepositions if the noun is in plural it's supposed to be in dative case same about ar and pia will be followed by the noun in genitive if this noun is in singular and as always with prepositions it will be in dative if the noun is in plural. Now let's see, what do we get here? That is iet uz darbu. So darbs become darbu after uz. Braukt uz skolu, to go to school, or to drive to school. Skola becomes skolu. Ceļot uz Spāniju, also the name of the country will change from Spānija to Spāniju. Because we use preposition uz. Lidot uz mājām. To fly home. Lidot uz mājām. Home is a plural noun in Latvian language. And that's why after uz we're supposed to use a dative ending. Mājām. Second column ar. After the preposition ar. Iet ar kājām. To walk on foot. Again, kaya, we need to use both of them, right? <laughs> That's why uh, we would use a dative form here. Braukt ar autobusu, to go by bus. And that's again accusative. Ceļot ar ģimeni, with the family. Or ceļot ar vilcienu, travel by a train. Uh, both of them would be accusative forms. Lidot ar lidmašīnu, to fly by pl uh, with a plane, but uh, yeah, it sounds weird in English, but in Latvian it's very common to say, yeah, es lidošu ar lidmašīnu. And pia, tāda iet pie draudzenes, to go to your friend, female friend, pia plus genitive, that's why draudzenes, it's one female friend. Braukt pie vecmāmiņas, a grandmother. Braukt, um, sorry, ceļot pie radiem, to travel to the house of your relatives. Yeah. Radiem, so it's plural, masculine noun, radi, relatives, radiem. Because it's plural, we use dative. Un lidot pie ārsta, if that's possible as well, I believe. But sometimes you need to take a plane to get to your doctor. Pie ārsta. So ārsts become ārsta. And as always, there is some exceptions. 
iet mājās, iet ciemos, uh, it, I used a locative forms to go home, to go uh, to visit someone. Brauk ekskursija, to go on excursion, uh, vacation, um, work trip, uh, brauk autobusā to be on a bus. Uh, un lidot lidmašīnā in the plane. So that's also possible to use it uh, with the locative forms. Yeah, especially braukt ekskursiju atvaļinājumā. We would never use it braukt uz ekskursiju vai braukt uz atvaļinājumu. It doesn't work. Yeah, these ones will go in locative. But you can go by bus and you can be inside of the bus as well. And then it's in locative. So, that's the main idea I wanted to tell you about the verbs this time. I hope that was useful. I would really love to hear your comments and let me know your suggestions, ideas and your sentences. Paldies un lai veicas visu labu. Atā!